Thank you, Steffi, for the kind welcome. And I'm always uh, impressed where you meet people, even like under the earth. <laughs> so uh, welcome, Dan. Great Thank to you have you much. here. Um, so you have recently quit your job at Google to yeah. join Creative as CEO. Um, and your company works on creative automation um, that helps advertisers and creatives scale their uh, creative work. So tell us a bit about it. What does your company actually do and how does it fit into what's happening right now in the advertising space? Sure. So I've spent around six years at Google and YouTube. And even in the last period, like advertising has changed a lot. There are many more channels than before. There are many different formats that you need to create ads for. And also the expectations of consumers have changed a lot. So they want in the same time personalized and customizable ads for them, but at the same time full privacy, right? So there's a higher pressure for companies to produce more content than ever. And what we do is that we help them close this creative gap, basically help them produce this content much, much faster. And then, of course, AI now comes to augment this added value. And, but I, I would assume it's not just in our case. Like, AI comes to augment the value in a lot of different industries. Absolutely. So, I mean, as a, as a product person, I look at AI and generative AI from a consumer point of view and how does it actually implement, uh, impact the customer journey. So, um, what is striking for me is that generative AI from a consumer point of view really simplifies customer journeys. So when you build products, that is a significant aspect of it. So um, because you want to be uh, your product to be as convenient as possible with as little friction as possible. So when you think about it, so I, I, I go on and book my vacation. So it's always a hassle. I hate it, yeah. right? Because there's, you start uh, like Googling, then you go on social media, re you read reviews. Um, you uh, uh, start setting filters, you go through categories, and it takes forever. So what I mean by simplifying customer journeys is that now all of a sudden you just ask a simple question. Please recommend to me a vacation for a family of four um, on the beach for two weeks within a certain budget. And then and I get instantly a set of options. Yeah. But simplification is also in, in the workflows for designers. Like when you think about producing content, there are a few phases, right? You have the creation phase, you have the scaling and personalization phase, and the serving phase. And then AI comes in each of these phases to make it much, much faster. And actually, we have a video. I don't know if you, you have it, but I want to show you like this taken to the next level, where you just basically add your URL, you just add your website, and then all your ads are created automatically without you having to touch anything. So let's see if it works, but um, yeah. So it, it starts from, again, it starts from your URL. Let's say you want to create ads. You just click Generate Ad. You just add uh, um, your URL, your website. It scrolls through your website, looks at your logo, your photos, and everything is generated automatically without having to do anything. You can then animate the ads that you have on your website, like the photos. It gets animated instantly in order to make it more, much more clickable because that's what you want people to click on those ads. And then you add AI on top of it to, to generate text ideas, copies for your ads, to, making, to make them much, much better. And then you can scale it in all over the world, like in all languages, in an instant. And all of this is being done basically in a few seconds, just taking the information that you have available on your website. And at the end, you can do the A-B testing, and then you can say, which is the right creatives that I should double down on? that I should invest more money based on the clicks and the impression that it gets. And then you just publish it. So this is, this is an example of how creative automation takes it from, from, the, from the website, and then you generate all your ads. But of course, the quality of the ads that are going to be generated here depends a lot on the data that you have on your website. And so the data is key when we're talking about this. The, that is the case, and it is the case also when you build consumer products, because um, I think that the interesting part is uh, when, you, when you want to build user experiences, you need to start at being very clear of what is the use case and the problem that you want to uh, solve, obviously. And then pretty much after that, if you want to leverage the power of AI, you need to be clear on what kind of data do I need to actually solve this problem. So being very clear on use case and the required data that has to, be, that has to go into an AI system this is the main consideration. And once you know that, you go to step further and uh, you think about like 
how do I actually need to build my product in a way that I collect the right data, right? Because you need to build a product a certain way to create feedback loops so that you create feedback or you get feedback from your users. And this is like th this kind of thinking that you built a product in an algorithm-centric design. And I think a great example, because that's very abstract, I think a great example of that is uh, TikTok. So when you look at what they're doing is they present you with one content piece at a time. And then that's very clean so that you know um, you get instant signals in terms of how long you consume it, if you like it, if you share it, how you interact with it. So these are like very clean signals that you get back. So the product is built in a way that it then, based on these signals, can offer you the relevant content. Yeah. But I think you can, like, you can not only rely on, on AI and on Gen AI, because we see this, for example, in, in design and in ads. People are saying, well, generative AI is coming and it's changing everything. And it does have a strong impact. But let's be frank. Like, Agencies and brands don't want people with 15 hands in their, <laughs> on, in their photos, right? You need, you need to still give designers the ability to change that. You need, you need designers to have like full creative uh, sort of like freedom. So it starts from generative AI, but what we, what, when we think about creating the ads, we use the term assisted AI. Because also companies want their ads to be on brands, to be customizable. It's not enough to just generate random photos. You need them to be on brand. So I think this is where it sort of gets a bit trickier. And that's why we sometimes prefer to use the term like assisted AI, not generative AI, so that we don't like fully rely on, on AI. Yeah. And um, I think what you, what you mentioned in the, in the presentation as well, which I found quite, quite, quite interesting, is that in today's world you have like so many channels and so many consumption modes yeah. uh, that you need to cover. So and also with a higher frequency, because people expect uh, uh, companies to engage with posts and content weekly or daily. E exactly. And, and, and uh, when, when you look at building, building great media products, right, so it's, it's very similar. So uh, there are so many consumption situations that you have today, so many devices, so many channels. And for me, like the major impact of generative AI on media products is that you now have this kind of multimodality because we talked about uh, automated content generation and all of that. But from a product perspective, I think what is really key to building great media experiences is leveraging the multimodality. So what do I mean with it? So let's start with an article that's written in, in, in German. So you can obviously translate it into many different languages. You can create a audio version that is five 10, 15 minutes long out of that. You can summarize this text. You can rewrite it in a different style. You can create illustrations automatically. You can create video or VR experience. We're not very far from like good quality examples in that space. So building like rich experiences in consuming media content, this is really the key from my point of view when looking at it from a, from a, from a product point yeah. of view. But I think it's not just that the, the user experience is much better, but it's also changing the way companies look at their p and in, in what sense? In the sense that from a cost perspective, it's very hard for a company nowadays to produce as much content as it's needed nowadays. So they don't have the uh, resources, they don't have the time, they don't have the people. So then AI comes to help on the cost side. That's number one, so that's a big impact. But the second point is on the sales opportunity. Because as I was saying initially, People expect personalized ads. When they see personalized, personalized ads, they click on it, and then they buy the product. So if they're not using AI, they're also missing opportunities on sales. So I think it's not just that AI comes to make the product experience much better. It also comes and changes the way business owners think about their P&L. And I assume it's like in media, probably it's, it, you see these changes as well. Or Yes, you do yeah. see them, and I think the starting point to, to understand like the dynamics behind it is you need to think about the value chain and how it changes through Gen AI and conversational interfaces. So traditionally, you need to look at distribution and access because mm -hmm. that's where the magic happens. That's where the gatekeepers are, and that's where the money is made. So when you look at how Gen AI transforms this landscape, right? traditionally, you would like like search, web search, would be a major intermediary connecting users with content or products or whatever it is. So now you have a conversational interface that is owning this function, and it's much more convenient. 
So this changes monetization dynamics behind it uh, in terms of customer journey and where the money is allocated. Yeah. And it actually also provides additional revenue streams, right? Like you can have ads inside that conversational chat box, let's say. Exactly. Or licensing deals with new gatekeepers, right? Exactly. Instead of SEO optimization, you need to think about how do I get my content and products into conversational interfaces like ChatGPT, for example. Yeah. Or think about, let's say you go on a website on the publisher and you see a display ad, and let's say it's about, I don't know, um, a holiday. Uh, and then you can actually start discussing inside the ad without having to leave that website with a bot about that holiday, get a quote, and even end up like paying the holiday directly inside the ad on the publisher website, for example. Exactly. This changes a lot. And by the way, like, how do you see the, the future of media like, evolving, considering like, all of these technologies now? Well, uh, I mean, my, my, my couple of or my key takeaways would really be is first to look at like what is, how can Gen AI help in your business simplify the customer journey, right? Because that's from a consumer point of view a major thing. Um, the second one would be be very clear on data that you need and how this data can Im can be used and build the products in a way that you collect valuable data. From the beginning. From the beginning, in yeah. your product design, built in feedback loops, as I mentioned. And the, th the last one would actually be, be creative about monetization opportunities because every new technology brings new opportunities in terms of monetization and how you can make money with it. So uh, I think these are a couple of takeaways uh, you should consider. Yeah, definitely. Also, I think on the, on the um, uh, content side, I would say that for the first time, content is starting to become like horizontal across your all departments in the company. So it's not, more th it's not just something that belongs to the design or to marketing. It's now connected with product as well, with sales and so forth. So when you think about advertising, it's much more now about how you involve all the departments to create the content much more often on all these channels, in all these formats, and for that you need AI in order to close this creative gap. Because your customers expect for, from you to be present on all these channels and also to deliver information on a frequency that has never been done before. So this can only be done basically with, with automation. True. Dan, thank you very much for a very insightful conversation. Uh, we're not holding you back from lunch anymore. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you See very you much for your time.